Now let us follow the events inside of a cell as it starts to under the intricate process of mitosis. The earliest sign that a cell is leaving interphase and is entering the first stage of mitosis called prophase is that the chromatin begins to form itself into the definite shapes of separate chromosomes. And at the same time, the nuclear membrane that separates the nucleus from the cytoplasm begins to be absorbed into the cell. As these things happen, the tiny nucleolus found in the nucleus also disappears. Thus prophase be defined as the stage of mitosis when the chromosomes first appear and the nuclear membrane and nucleolus disappear from view. As prophase progresses, the chromosomes become more distinct and now that the chromosomes can be seen, a rather odd fact becomes apparent. That chromosomes are always found in groups of two, called homologous chromosomes. This means that there are two copies of each chromosome present in every cell of the body, with the exception of certain sex cells. In our example, there is one pair of tall chromosomes and one pair of short chromosomes. This state, where double chromosomes are present, is called the diploid condition of a cell. The diploid condition of a cell means there will be two complete sets of DNA instructions present inside its nucleus. So that if something is wrong with one set of instructions, the other set will still be able to provide the cell with the information it needs to function properly. Under close examination, we find that in early prophase, each individual chromosome, whether tall or short, has a rather thickish appearance. This is because the DNA of each chromosome has replicated itself during interphase. On looking even more closely, we see that each chromosome actually consists of two parts called sister chromatids that contain the duplicated DNA. And at first, the sister chromatids are stuck very close together all along their lengths. It can now be seen that during prophase and part of interphase, there are actually four complete sets of DNA instructions present because the DNA of each homologous pair is doubled at this point. The sister chromatids are held together at a specific region called the centromere. Joined together in this way, the chromosomes begin to arrange themselves so they can separate into the newly forming cells. And as they do so, the sister chromatids become much more obvious. Besides the changes in chromatin and chromosomes, other important events are also occurring inside the cell when prophase begins. In animal cells, a structure called a centriole centrosome divides into two daughter centrioles that migrate to opposite ends of the cell. Between the centrioles, a delicate arrangement of microtubules called the spindle is formed. The microtubules that make up the spindle are called spindle fibers. Spindle fibers are critical to cell reproduction because they help arrange the chromosomes and later in mitosis separate them into two equal groups. In normal cells, all the complicated events that define prophase take between 30 and 60 minutes to complete, finally ending when the next stage of mitosis called metaphase is reached.